Good afternoon, everyone. I had to look at the time to see where we were as far as the day is concerned. I feel like a kid in the candy store. I did not sleep last night. I was up all night as if it was my first official practice. Um, intentionally, I wanted to give the team some time off before we really got going, and I wanted to build that excitement that I had as a player uh, by giving them a break and the anticipation to have them ready for the season. Um, it's obviously at different times, unique, but I'm excited about my group and just look forward to getting better with them every single day. David Johnson. <clears throat> hey coach, how are you? Good. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you about Madison Scott mm -hmm. and uh, what we should anticipate out of her. She's such a highly rated recruit. What you've seen from her, is there going to be an acclimation period for her? Or do you think she's going to kind of hit the court running, so to speak? Well, I, I didn't think I would get that lucky for her to be able to just come in and break onto the scenes. But I can tell you that she is far along as a freshman. I think every freshman coming into the SEC needs an acclimation opportunity. Uh, but she, she's looking great, really uh, playing and practicing at a, at a high level. I mean, there's an there's a immediate, you can tell that there's an immediate difference of talent uh, when she's on the floor. Really excited about her growth and her impact, even as a freshman. And she has big goals as well, David. So, you know, she, she really wants to to make her mark as a freshman. And so we're just helping her along in that aspect. Second thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, the last time we talked to you, your program had done such a great job of managing COVID. Is that still the case? Everything's still good on that front? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, I can't comment on, you know, certain things as far as that's, as far as COVID and personnel is concerned. But I can tell you that we have been doing a great job. You know, we, we've been paying attention to the rules, our athletic trainer, Meredith. Uh, we call her the COVID police. She's been phenomenal, uh, uh, almost to the point. I mean, she drives me nuts. That's why I know she's doing a good job. But, and our players understand, and they want to have a season. So um, we, we've been kind of lucky over here. All right, Nick Suss. Hey, Coach. Hey. Uh, you uh, you haven't been shy over the last year or two about talking about how the expectations for this year are going to be different yeah. than the last couple of years. How do you manage that? How do you kind of coach these players that this is the year that things are going to be different? And how do you kind of instill that attitude on both the returning players mm -hmm. and the new players? Well, for the new players, it was easy because that's how we got them. You know, we were able to get them here because they wanted to be different. They wanted to bring their winning attitude. Everybody that we have committed is from a winning high school or college program as a transfer. So that's something that they expect. Um, it's been a transition for the returners, not a bad one. Uh, you just don't know what you don't know. And so, but they have been extremely open. Uh, they have embraced their new teammates. Uh, the level of competition has risen tremendously. Uh, the level of expectation has. And, um, you know, I think as we continue to go throughout the season and the returners get to really see that it's different, uh, it'll make them more comfortable in going into this new phase of the program which we're trying to reach. Is there anything different about your philosophy or your attitude coming into this year? No, because I've always been about winning. Uh, 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 I, I think, I, you know what? I, I I think I'm I'm way more demanding this year. But I think I can be that way because, you know, I I've had two years with the young ladies that are returning, and I've spent a lot of time recruiting the ones that are here, and so we don't have to get to know each other. Everybody understands what the expectation is. Uh, the newcomers, we call them the new bloods. They know why they're here. And, uh, you know, and they know that they're going to be held to that expectation every single day. So I can tell you what, I've been sleeping a little better. <laughs> Thanks, Coach.
Carolyn Pack. You know, you have to bow before you talk to CP. You got to do one of these. Oh, you better get out of here <laughs> with that stuff. Hey, um, you have, and every coach has talked about your recruiting class mm -hmm. uh, that has the SEC concern. So if there were, a no, uh, let's say, three They're not areas, concerned. <laughs> three areas of where this team is going to be better and different, mm -hmm. What would that be? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, first of all, we're, we're way more athletic, and uh, we have more size. Um, so you, okay. when you walk into our practice, you know, we don't, we don't have a 5-4 guard playing the three. You know, like we're 6-foot, we're 6-1 six six at that position. And so that's, that's, been, <laughs> that's been great for me. Uh, to their, their mentality and work ethic. You would just see us, I, the first two years, honestly, I felt like I was in survival mode, you know, just trying to get through, really changing a lot of what I wanted to do due to personnel. I, I just think that's coaching. This is the first year, you know, hoping that we stay healthy, that we'll have depth and, and you all, We'll be able to see, and our fans will be able to see the type of basketball that we want to play. Way more aggressive, uh, 94 feet, up tempo. Uh, you you'll be able to see that. And then the third thing is you're gonna you're gonna see a team that's young, but a team that is extremely tough. That's one thing we focus on all preseason is trying to get them to a mental place where they compete, can compete night in and night out in the SEC. Coming in, I know it's early in the season, mm -hmm. uh, but who has stood out to you and why? What, have, what has she done that has stood out? Yeah, man. Uh, I, I have a few people, you know. Let's, uh, Donetta Johnson, <laughs> we've been patiently waiting on her. And I mean, she has been incredible. You know, just, she just knows how to score in a multiple amount of ways. Um, and she's taken defense to another level. And, I, and that's probably accredited to Georgia. They play defense there. So it's not something that was foreign to her. So she came in and really bought into the defensive philosophy right away. I, her work ethic, she's really silent. Uh, but she's in the gym all the time, and the things she's able to do, you know, I just don't know that you can coach it, uh, all of it. Uh, Madison Scott has been, you know, the All-American that we thought she would be. Uh, she's unique because she's a four player, so it's not like she's a, you know, like a scoring guard, you know. So she, she will impact the game defensively. She's just so long just takes up a lot of space on the defensive end. And uh, Snuda Collins has really been the shocker for me. Honestly, going in, I thought that we may redshirt her just to give her some time to get stronger and get acclimated to playing at this level. But at 6-1, I mean, she's shooting the ball. She has our best efficiency numbers right now on the team. So she's been extremely impressive. And I tell you this, if the basketball gods really want to bless me, we may get Shakira Austin Claire <laughs> because Shakira is a pro. Uh, she has just really raised the level of everything the team does from the day she stepped on campus. I mean, she works extremely hard. She's one thing I love about her. She's cu curious. So you'll see her in the point guard workouts. She'll sneak in there and, and want to do everything they're doing. So if she gets to play this year, great. If not, then you guys will be in for a treat next year because we hadn't seen a player like her in the SEC probably since Candace Parker, honestly. When do you think you'll find out? Uh, you know, we don't know. We, we, I, we really weren't going to apply for a waiver. Uh, we, we weren't because we understood, like, there was no issue with her leaving Maryland. She just did some, wanted to do something different. But when I, I, being transparent, when I got word that this year, they will get this year back, 
I'm like, we need to try to see if we can get her to be eligible. And her teammate got eligible. She's at Oregon. Um, I'm not sure what they use to get her eligible. You know, there are multiple things that you can use. And I'm hoping what we use helps us. If not, if not, it's okay because our, our young team needs to learn how to grow and and survive without her. Because when she comes, she's going to impact us immediately. When you look across the SEC mm -hmm. uh, and with the new talent that you have brought in, any early predictions of where we're going to see Ole Miss uh, um, competing in the SEC? Well, I can tell you this. Um, <laughs> I, I don't foresee us not winning a game. So <laughs> we we bottom out. So we definitely feel like just with the addition of Madison and um, and uh, Donetta, uh, and, and, and we have Val back, you know, so that's, that's going to be – she brings a, a level of electricity to our team. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know, like, where we'll land, but I, I know that people won't want to play us. You know, but, uh, we're going to be young and we're going to be around for a long time with this group and just what we have coming in. Thanks, yo. Thank you. you. Same. David Johnson. David Wynn. Oh, sorry, I'm trying like to be. a lifetime ago, we sat in the pavilion and watched Jacoria Bracey dump in 30-plus points. In State yeah. Uh, where is she right now in terms of her development? Uh, mm hmm and how did she fit into the plans? JB, JB has been your typical freshman point guard. You know, they're, they're, I think I feel like when it comes to transitioning from high school to college, that's probably the hardest position uh, to transition to. But she's been great. I, I've seen a lot of growth from her. I expect to play everybody on my roster, honestly, uh, just because how we want to play. I don't think that we are at the point where we can go talent for talent with teams in the SEC. Our strategy is going to have to be a little bit more different. So we're going to have to tire people out. We're going to have to wear them down. And so in order to do that, you have to, you have to play numbers. So she's going to get on the floor. She's shooting the ball really well, and uh, that's something that she can do. But still adjusting to the physicality of playing at this level, but I expect her to have a great career here at Ole Miss and being a Mississippi, uh, Mississippi zone, like I expect her to represent for sure. Considering that, that you're going to play a lot of girls mm -hmm. this season, uh, any idea of, of maybe who the first five on the floor will be that you could share with us? Mm -hmm. That's kind of tough. <laughs> That's kind yeah, of sure. – I, I tell you this, Donetta Johnson is a starting guard for me. I mean, she that she shows it every single day. I mean, it's not that, – that wouldn't be a surprise for anybody. Uh, you know, Madison Scott's looking really good at, at, the, at the four position. Uh, Mimi Reed looks good. You know, Mimi's been in the jungle for two years, so um, there's not much she hadn't experienced and – She's showing that every single day. She's just composed, just knows, just been there. Um, mm. As far as the other two positions, right now it's 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 a toss up. We'll figure that out as we start official practice. The last time we talked to you, I think you said Sarah was probably about seventy percent. Yeah. How is she now, and how does she kind of fit into the plans, or do you know yet? Sarah, Sarah's back. So Sarah got cleared a couple days ago. And uh, which we're extremely excited about um, because I really wish she had a year to play in the SEC. But, you know, unfortunately, life happens. Uh, she looks great. Honestly, my philosophy is if a player is out, whether it's for a small injury or a big injury, I kind of I don't think about them. So it's almost like they're not here because I don't want to get anxious. I want to focus on my controllables. And so we really hadn't been thinking about Sarah as far as where she fits, but she's been looking so great every single day. Now I'm like, she has, she's going to be on the floor. She's going to get an opportunity. And if she keeps growing the way she is, we expect her to get quality minutes. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Jake Thompson. Hey coach. Hey Jake. Uh, you, 
you've kind of touched on a little bit, but with Nesbitt and, and Rankin now, kind of your two seniors along with Mimi, that very, very seasoned junior leadership rise, just how do you kind of feel like those three will do or how have you seen it maybe and what y'all been able to do in the summer? Yeah, we, we took full advantage of the pandemic. We, we really spent a lot of time on just growing as a unit in, in multiple ways from having guest speakers to having talks amongst each other, just little projects that we've been working on. And, and I really see it paying off for us every single day that we're together. Uh, as far as the leadership is concerned, we're, we're kind of getting that from all over the place. It's kind of been surprising to, to see Shakira be as vocal as she's been. Um, and the, the girls really lean on her. You know, they believe in her. She's proven. So coming from a winning program, and she's not shy to give her opinion on things. She's going to be fun to coach, um, and in a good way. And, and, and then Mimi has been there, so she's been great uh, with her leadership. And Donetta leads by what she shows. She's our hardest worker by far. And, I mean, she just brings it every single day. So really excited about seeing other people step into those in that role too like my freshmen have been speaking up you know so i kind of try to let it organically grow you know and, and kind of give people the 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 space and the opportunity to step into that role if that's what they want thanks coach thanks jake christy tom scotty hey yo how are hey, you hey christy um, a year ago when I did one of your games, you compared Donetta to Kennedy as mm -hmm. well as she was practicing. Now with the four years, <clears throat> you've been saying her name a lot. Where is she now? Like, what kind of mark do you feel like she can leave on this league? Wow. I mean, I think she can be one of the best players in the conference. You know, she – let me tell you something. I <laughs> The other day I, I, I sent Joni a text and I said – if I could just kiss you right now, I would, because uh, getting her from Georgia to, to us was a gift. I mean, seriously, she's really been stepping up and just the things she's able to do. Uh, one thing that'll be a little bit, you know, I did say I compared her to Kennedy because she can score it, but, but she's not that. Like, she's her own person. You know, she's a big, strong guard. You know, Kennedy was strong, but she wasn't big. Like, Donetta has size. Uh, we, you guys will see her at the foursome, you know, she, I mean, she can post up, she can, she can really score any way she wants. So I really think that, um, she's going to have a great career in the SEC and this year she's going to be a force to reckon with. And I know she's been working extremely hard to do that. So I'm excited for her to, you know, step on the scene and, and introduce herself to everybody. You made a comment earlier that you felt like in your first two years, you were just in survival mode. Yeah. What have you learned oh my during gosh. those two years that now can be help this team in year three? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think uh, last year was my biggest character test ever. You know, um, honestly speaking, no one, no coach thinks that they can go through a season and just handle not winning a conference game. So my character was tested. I found out a lot about myself. Um, I really focus on being consistent. So I think as we have success this year, you won't see a difference in my attitude because I know what it feels like to not have success. And I, so you kind of see me be even keel. Uh, I think the mask will help with that. <laughs> I don't know that I'll be as charismatic. You won't be able to see it. <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to get one of those those fancy masks though. but. Um, you know, what, what has taught me is that if you, if you want to have success in arguably the best conference in the nation, you cannot fast forward that. You know, you have to build it and you have to do it the right way. And as, as we went through those first couple seasons, you know, I made some mistakes uh, with recruiting the right fit um, and trying to speed up the process and um, there was probably midway last year, I just came to the realization that you can't, you can't rush this. You know, I'm here for a reason. There's going to be a build. Uh, 
and and I think that I'll and I'm very familiar with the conference now too. You get your butt beat a couple of times, you start figuring out a way how to punch back. So um, I, I'm familiar with the conference, and uh, just looking forward to taking another step with this team. So now that you know the SEC better, what are a couple of benchmarks, especially for such a young team? Mm that you guys have already got circled that you're focusing on this season? Yeah, I mean, shoot, with a young team like this, you got to take it one day at a time. You know, the conference has a certain cadence, a certain rhythm to it. Um, and so I kind of realized that, like, okay, this is you, – you don't get that feel until you go through it. Uh, so what the way we're going to approach things is game by game. You know, we, we want to try to be 1-0 every game. I don't even know that I can even break it up in – little small sessions, set sections, you know, like you want to have preseason and then the first half of conference. Like, I, I don't think that that is a way to approach it with this group. Um, I think that people, I don't know that people think about it, but I do. You know, with everything going on and the pandemic and the way my players have been forced to learn, with they've had to consume tons of information in, in short periods of time. The semester um, shutting being condensed. That's a lot of, they, I mean, I feel like they eat, sleep, drink uh, assignments because from, from professors. So it's been a lot. So what we want to do is simplify it. We don't, we don't want to be that added stress for them when it comes to the game. So just really slicing it and taking it one game at a time will be our approach. Are there any like statistical benchmarks that you guys are focused on? Oh, well, so yeah, like, I hey, mean, we got to improve. Absolutely. I, I, well, we, we couldn't rebound. I, I felt like I could have out rebounded my team last year. And, <laughs> and I, and my vertical is 16, I think. So, um, it's more than mine. Right. So we, we, we definitely, we're going to rebound. You know, we, we want to, we want to try to win rebounding battles. One of the numbers that we're looking at a lot is deflections. We want to get 40 plus deflections a game. That's something that uh, we're talking about right now. And we want to make sure we have 70, 75 possessions. We don't want to play slow. I don't want to make – see, I don't want to make it a, a talent versus talent thing. And, and, and you do that when you play slow, when you play in the half court. You know, we, we want to make it a race and, and see who can last with us. And obviously we'll be strategic. There are some teams that that's what they want to do, you know. Um, Again, that's now being familiar with the conference and understanding. I remember year one, I tried to make a race with Arkansas and they ran us out the gym. You know, that that wasn't smart, you know. So we're going to be strategic as, as far as that's concerned. But deflections, rebounds, and possessions, and uh, and our efficiency, my, my video guy has been like, driving me nuts with this whole efficiency field goal, you know? So um, just giving my players the opportunity to shoot the three ball early and often, uh, just because we wanna, we wanna get more points out of the possessions, um, that's gonna be important as well. And then my last question, what has Shea brought to the staff? Oh my God. Uh, <clears throat> just a winning pedigree, uh, he just, you know, at Maryland, they won five out of six championships this year. They may have been a number one seed. Um, he was bummed about their season being sh cut short. I wasn't because I was on a recruiting hunt to try to get him here. Um, he, he, I, I cannot even <clears throat> explain. And in, 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 I would take a session to talk about his impact that he has made in this short amount of time, you know. He is, I, I don't know that people know, but he's a, he's a veteran. So he, he has a sense of, like, understanding the room, understanding situations. You know, um, he's been great with that. He's brought a lot of winning culture and habits to us that we took over and, and have embraced. And it, and it has shown results. We've seen the results immediately. And then I think pound for pound, he's one of the best player development coaches in the country. You know, I mean, he just, <clears throat> the way he breaks it down from a, a philosophical standpoint, 
um, and I've allowed him to build our player development program for all of our coaches, and he's just been phenomenal with it. You know, he, I mean, he's just a great overall guy. You know, I'm really excited. To, it really, we, we hit a home run with him. I needed that. That's what I needed um, on the staff, and we got it. With him and Coach Bo, my former coach, like, I feel like now I have a – and this is no knock to anybody. I just feel like now I have an SEC staff. You know, you look at other benches and you see the experience they have, and, and I want to be able to match up with that, and I feel pretty good about it this year. Thanks. Nick us, and then we'll have time for one more afterward. Yeah, kind of a big picture here, one coach, but what has this offseason taught you about – the power that you and your players have. I know you spent that day at the Capitol. Your players have marched. Yeah. You've marched. You've mm -hmm. been very vocal online. Just what have you learned about the reach and influence that you guys have as SEC coaches, SEC athletes here? Man, it's, I, I realize that, I mean, I, I just think that that's sports in general. You know, that's why I can't believe that people try to box athletes and coaches in where we have so much influence on an everyday basis. Um, I learned this, this off season gave me a chance to really understand how important it is to teach our players to exercise who they are and use their platform. You know, I just remember as a college athlete, no one ever talked to us about voting. You know, no, no one ever talked to us about what was going on. And I'm sure at that point we had something that was going on, that some type of social unrest. It's not like this is something new. This has been going on. And so I'm just really excited that I have allowed our players to use their voice, use their platform, educate. We've learned so much, you know, about voting, what that means, the judicial system, you know, the branches. And then I think the most powerful and most memorable thing I've done as a coach was going down to Jackson at the Capitol with the, with the rest of the colleagues in, in the state and being a part of changing something that symbolized so much hate and, and being a part of that, changing our flag. You know, there were so many people, Nick, and you know this, that have fought for centuries, uh, for, for decades, trying to get that change and so the fact that we were able to be the icing on the cake, uh, that means the world to me. And the, and, and the fact that my players had a chance to witness that, I know that I'll empower them to use their platform uh, when they get their opportunity. Thank you. All right, we have time for one more from Carolyn Peck. You know, this is from uh, Drea Carter. Some For some reason, she got kicked off. I know, I was sad. Passed. And said, so, well, she just wanted me to ask um, if we can expect the same style of offense, spread the floor, get downhill, drive and kick, or if that will change this season. No, no, we, we're, we're coming with that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's our money. That's how we're going to eat. If, if, we, if we could be in games with that, with the personnel I had last year, then I'd be a fool to change it. I mean, obviously, I have players that can do different things. Uh, so it was very simple. Uh, this year you'll see uh, different, different sets and packages that will allow the rest of, you know, the pieces that we have to show what they can. I don't feel like we had an inside game last year. We'll have an inside game this year with Andasia Puckett and uh, Ian Le Kitchens. And then small ball uh, with Caitlin McGee. Uh, playing down there. So, yes, we will be down here. We will space the floor. We will make it simple. But then you'll see, you know, we're going to put Donetta in situations and Maddie in situations that where, where they can be their best. And um, so really looking forward to playing with different combinations and packages so that they can show what they're capable of doing. And then you, you mentioned Kitchens. She asked, what kind of production can we expect from Banks and Kitchens? And will they have more of a presence this season? Yeah, well, with, with, with Andasia uh, Puckett, she absolutely, I mean, uh, AP, Banks. Oh, Banks is no longer here. Okay. I'm like, Banks. Well, so we have AP, so Andasia Puckett. That's, a, that's gotcha. our transfer that sat out. 
um, okay. from Cincinnati. Um, she, I mean, she's, she's, listen, she's like a black hole. When it goes in, it's going up. So the people need to just be ready to, to go. She ain't passing that thing out. So she's going to get touches, and and uh, she she finishes really well around the basket. I, Ianla last year was uh, the best highly rated, you know, screener. I know people don't look at that, but uh, she said she was she was so productive with setting screens last year. If she can do that with the type of players we have coming off of it this year, with you know Taya Douglas shooting the way she's shooting, and Donetta and 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 Snudder, I mean that's going to help us a lot. Um, offensively, she's gotten better, uh, but we don't have the expectations that we have for AP to like be that dominant presence down there and score. We, we have her more so being that bruiser, that physical player um, that can clear some space out for us. So we have two different looks, and then we have a small ball uh, with Caitlin and Sarah that will play down there and be able to give us some Miami Heat, you know, uh, kind of offense that we're excited about.